star is Leo and it's nice to welcome you here, back here for actually um, chat two, video number two of a chatty kind of video. So yeah, grab yourself some tea or coffee or whatever you'd like to drink and then we'll get right into it. So yeah, anyway, um, the previous video I filmed at my desk, my just where I do everything, you know, which needs to be done on the laptop, the writing and, and all those kind of things where you need to sit down somewhere and be creative. Um, this, this area I've decided to film today is my, is the bookshelf where all of my books are stored. Um, just, just saying I recently reordered them all so they're all in colour coordinated order, which is totally it, before it was all chaotic and everything was um, anywhere and all the books were just piled about we moved here and we just settled and put everything as it was and then you know now I just thought every time I looked at it I thought oh it looks chaotic so I need to do something about that and I thought the best way is to just colour coordinate it which actually I resisted at first because I thought that idea sounded really just I don't know it just sounded unappealing but now I look at it, it just looks amazing and welcoming and every time you look at it, it just looks like, yeah, very pleasing to the eye. So I thought, um, I've got a lot of books, this is basically the only, the only thing I spend my money on is books really, especially now at this time where you can't go to shops and I order all my stuff off Amazon, which has got so much more expensive since the... Um, since Brexit, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about that. I think everyone's had enough of it, and we just want some good news for once. We want to, we want to like just get back to normal, and yeah. Um, you can see here we recently bought a banana plant. It's really great. It just makes the room look more like natural, and everything is much more harmonious when you have a bit of green in your living space. So yeah, um, I came here to, to show you some of the books that I really love, have loved reading in the past and I thought, you know, I'd just just show you and get you a bit inspired to read because as I said, reading is basically my love number one alongside writing actually, which I'll tell you about um, quickly, briefly because it is, it's, I don't want to sort of like go into detail right now anyway because it's a sort of like early start in the project and I, I always think if you talk about something too much it sort of it loses the magic you know at least at this stage where it's all early and anyway like um yeah since I wrote the first book which actually I'll I'll tell you like it's called Cold Black Winter Heart oh it's let me just get Right, actually, conveniently, I have it here. Um, ooh, I printed it out into paper form um, because a few people wanted to read it. My mum wanted to read it, and I gave it out. And and um, I haven't even I've not sent it out to be published yet. Uh, bearing in mind, this was written in twenty seventeen which, you know, there was so much stuff happening. I, to be honest, I didn't really feel like ready to go big with my writing when I felt at such an early, at such an early like stage in my, in my like writing career. Like it, it just, I just felt like I needed to practice a bit more and sort of like basically write book number two and see if I was good enough to, to keep on writing books that it wasn't just a one-off sort of achievement, you know? Hmm. Yeah, so I'll just show you, you know, the front page. It's a, it's been annotated by my um, sister-in-law. She's German, and I gave it to her, and she sort of translated a few um, words into German to help her get along with it. But yeah, do you know what? It's been so many years since I read it. But every time I pick it up, I sort of I have a look. I select like a random page, and I'm like, I read it, and I'm like. Oh, it's not half bad actually. <laughs> so it's always a good thing if you if you're a creative and you look back at some work you've done and you think, 
oh that actually in a way it's not as bad as you thought it was or even better in which in you know in my case I sort of think you know it was better than I thought it was which is a great thing um, for an artist who tends to like you know criticize herself a lot for thinking oh it's not good enough but who what artist doesn't do that you know but anyway like um it's honestly if people ask me what it's about and it's really hard to describe it's not a sort of one paragraph description thing it's a it's quite a you know it's a psychological novel um people have said oh I, I can see how it's based on sort of aspects of your family life you know um and i get that and i definitely understand i now looking back at it like so many years later i can see where where certain things have come from and i can see like the aspects of myself that were really quite troubled about th things and i and it must have come out in this book and you know at the time i think i needed to to sort of have this release in in my writing and it was just after i graduated um st martin's that i i had this book idea in my head and i really wanted to write because it, all these years i'd focused on fashion design and my writing had sort of gone to the side for a bit um i did quite a bit of writing on another book i didn't finish that one um back in 2013 i wrote quite a bit for that but you know looking back at the the idea it was it was not a good idea it was really like problematic in a lot of ways it, it just i questioned myself in a, in a way like looking back at it but you know what you can understand a lot of yourself when you when you look back at your work and i understand some of the the ideas i had back then might might be seen as a bit well to me now it's just odd but yeah, you live and you learn and you grow. So actually, I'm not going to tell you about that now. I'm not going to talk about um, Cold Black Winterheart now. I think I'll think of the, about that the description more and then I'll tell you about it later. Um, the book I'm working on now, um, I've actually got a title for it, which is a good sign because Cold Black Winterheart had a title for it as soon as I started writing it. And for some reason, um, I think it just... I just don't know what it is. It almost is as if inside you, you know that it's a, it's going to be a book. It's not just a, like this little fleeting, you know, writing a few chapters and then abandon it. I really think like, you know, it's going to work as a book and you connect with it. And I, when I write the chapters, it just flows and you know, oh, well, I know what's going to happen next. You sort of think about it in your free time, think, oh, I'll, you know, I'll write about that scene and then certain characters come into your head and you're like oh yeah yeah that's how it's gonna go um because people people ask me what what i do as in how i plan my book do i do i make a big plan of it or do i just go straight into it and that's that's funny because a lot of people a lot of writers do different completely different like you know approaches to the way they write and the most common ways you hear is that people write this elaborate elaborate kind of um plan for this book they pre-write the characters they pre-write the plots and everything is all there to be you know basically you just need to write it to fill the blanks in and uh, obviously at first i thought that's the way to write but you know now i realize you know with cold black winterheart it just it was all it seems to be all inside me before I had even like written a plan and the bad thing about writing a plan for me is that it would have hindered anything that would have naturally just come out so I I wrote a basic sort of plot line it was a basic sort of thing of where I know what's gonna happen roughly didn't know what was gonna really happen in the end but as I wrote the book uh, I hadn't planned specifically the chapters what was gonna happen but naturally it happened as I wrote a chapter what I did was I wrote the chapter uh, I I sort of would leave that and you know I'd just walk around I'd go on a walk and as I'm walking I think oh what should happen and it's natural more natural for me this way to sort of think oh what's gonna happen like I'm walking and I think oh what would be the best thing to and 
in this way, it naturally sort of like goes on to the next scene, you know, as opposed to sitting down and planning hours, like a few hours of like just sitting there and writing this web of like what's going to happen in chapter eight or blah, blah, blah. And in this way, I genuinely think that, you know, a good book came out of it. And I, and I think, you know, uh, um, I genuinely want to get this published, you know, as soon as um, this coronavirus is over. I've, the past few years has been uh, quite a lot of things happening, moving and different places and traveling, and it, it wasn't really the time to, to be publishing, you know, and I wrote a lot of other things which weren't full complete books, but they were definitely solid works of um, projects in their own right. Um, so this next piece I'm doing, I just, I have the name, but I don't think I want to tell the name. I just want to keep it contained, you know, and especially at this stage. But I really want to update you on how it's going. And I know lately, the last couple of weeks, I haven't been writing much because I've been feeling a bit, you know, just low and just distant from, from people and, you know, life. And I just need a bit of like, I need to reconnect with my with England and in the UK and just to go back and like to to have a bit of normalcy to go and have some time with my family, my sister, my mum, uh, um, my brother. Yeah, I miss them all a lot. It's it's really hard, you know, I just have to you just have to keep going with it and, and just think you you dealt with it for so so much time anyway, so it's there's nothing you can do about it. If you can survive this COVID, you can really survive anything, I think. Um, yeah, I think I'll get along with um, recommending books that I've collected. Um, yeah. Um, okay, let's see what we've got. Um, first one I've got on this pile, um, I, I saw this recommended in the, in the Harrods magazine, actually. And I thought, I, I looked it up and I thought, oh, so I don't know about that, it sounds a bit weird. Not weird, but just a bit like ordinary and, you know, not very, not very interesting at the time anyway. Hmm. So it's called The Standing Chandelier by Lionel Shriver. Um, I'll read the back. I call it the standing chandelier, and if I'm honest with myself, this time I really want you to like it. She clinked her glass against his. Ready? Close your eyes. Weston played along. There was a rustle, then a click. Now. Um, I'm gonna read you the, the blurb as well. <clears throat> when Weston Bavansky receives an extravagant present from his best friend and old flame, Gillian Frisk, he doesn't quite know what to make of it, or how to get it past his fiancée, especially as it's massive, handmade, intensely personal sculpture that they'd have to live with forever. As the argument rages about whether Gillian's gift was an act of pure platonic generosity or something more insidious, battle lines are drawn. Can men and women ever be friends? Just friends. Um, okay, now I read it, I think, like, uh, I would definitely pick it up. Um, tastes change, you know, you get older and you start to think, oh, this this appeals to me more, this appeals to me less, you know. Um, and now I say that, like, I never was, I never had any interest in young adult novels in my, in my life. Even when I was a teenager, I just didn't have any interest. And, do you know what, like, I didn't start reading properly till I was like 16 and the first book I properly read out of my own enjoyment of just picking it up and, and like, <clears throat> and buying it with my own money was The Other Boleyn Girl and that is one of my favourite books because, okay, that's a completely different subject, I, I absolutely love the Tudors and ev anything to do with Tudor England, you name it, I... I've seen every film there is to do with Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII. Um, yeah, if you ask anyone that knows me, they would know that I'm an absolute mega fan of the Tudors. Even, you can see here, like, Hilary Mantle's The Mirror and the Light. Actually, I'm going to recommend that right now. 
Um, it is part of a trilogy. Um, let me just actually, the first book in the trilogy was in my pile um, and I wanted to recommend you that, which is Wolf Hall. Um, it's, this, this trilogy is absolutely amazing. It's a masterpiece of writing. I can't, uh, I literally, as a writer, I know what it's like as a process of sort of writing, but to write such an intricate, like, fiction of Thomas Cromwell, it's just like, it, it takes another level of writing. To me, it's like a, it's like another, a level above just standard fiction writing. She is like a wizard with writing. Um, the, the book, the first one, Wolf Hall. Oh, it's, I swear, like, you know, someone that can write a book like this is like, um, a genius, to be honest, because it's like, you have to go into the head of another person, research, 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 and, you know, I don't think it, it, it's not just about researching, it's basically you becoming that person. And, you know, I've read a lot of books, a lot of history fiction books based on characters, Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII, you know, but like, her, her embodiment, her like, um, her book of Thomas Cromwell, oh my gosh, do you know what, like, I actually cried when I read the last book, because it was so, you get invested in this character, and genuinely, like, um, you believe that he's a, that you are actually there with him I honestly it just feels like you are actually with the real Cromwell from that time and I wouldn't be surprised if he was like any if he wasn't any different to the to the Cromwell that she has created he's just an honestly a hugely multi-dimensional character amazing 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 I'll go back to this quickly like um, I just want to add, like, it's a really small book, really small, you can finish it within two days. Um, a lot of people wouldn't like uh, Lionel Shriver's writing, it's very literary, it's very thick, you know, the words are quite, you know, some words you haven't heard of and you sort of think, oh, what's the point, why, why would I read it? I had another malfunction? Mm. Um, what's the point of reading this? Um, well, I've... As a, as a, like, writer and reader, I can't stand books that are too, like, like, mainstream simplistic and, you know, when you read a book like this and you're pushed, sort of, intellectually to try and, like, understand words that you don't understand, it sort of pushes you and gets you to grow a bit as a sort of, especially as a writer, you really want to be pushing your boundaries of, like, you know, where your comfort, um, comfort points are. Um, yeah the thing is about this it's very simplistic in the way it's written in the structure of the writing and she sort of like moves from one one point to the next you know she doesn't linger too much on one scene and that's why it's a great book as well because it's a very fast-paced book and you know you surprisingly you get quite connected to the character even though it's quite a small book um I'm just gonna leave the, the camera like this because it, it, this, for some reason, it's just freaking out today and I don't know why. Um, yeah. Um, it's funny as well because you've got the three main characters, of which there are only like three characters really in this book, which is Weston, Gillian, and um, Weston's fiance. And the, it's just so interesting and um it makes you like want to read on because you want to see what happens between these three people the dynamic between them is the most sort of there's the most friction you can imagine between these three people you know can men be friends with women um that's a good question and it's a question that the book tries to answer um i think you know it does a good job in answering the question that like realistically I think yeah this is how it would probably go and how the the situation um, pans out in the book is how it probably would 
go anyway as well. It's quite... <laughs> There's points where you're like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's a shame, isn't it? You know, but what can you do? What could you do in that situation? I don't know. Um, let's see. I'm going to run through these really quickly because it's been, I've been talking quite a long time. Surprisingly, the time goes quite quickly. Um, I'm reading this book right now. I've just got it. This is Shakespeare, How to Read the World's Greatest Playwright. Um, because I recently watched this film. Oh god, I've forgotten the name of it. It's a recent film that's just come on Netflix by... Uh, Shakespeare is played by Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth... Oh god, I can't pronounce his name. But um, honestly, it's... A great film, oh my gosh, I can't recommend it enough, it's really intimate and you get to see the sort of like behind the scenes of Shakespeare and I like the fact that it was set, the film was set at his house, um, at his country house and it, honestly I love anything, like I said, I love anything that's to do with old England, you know, old ye old England and and I've been to Stratford upon Avon a lot of times. Oh, my earring fell out. Um, a lot of times with um, my family, um, especially in the summertime. Oh my gosh, it's amazing when it's summer and they do these outdoor productions of Shakespeare plays. I haven't actually been for a long time during the summer. You know, I went a few years ago and it, but it was winter and it was really dreary and not the great time to go there actually, but. It was, it's just those special memories you have like as a child when you used to go then. Oh, it's just romantic, I don't know, because you think, oh, this tree, did did Shakespeare sit <laughs> against this tree and like think about some new play he was gonna write or something. Anyway, this book is really small. Um, let's see. It basically takes you through a few of his plays and sort of explains them in detail and sort of how, how, what they're really about and how you can, different perspectives of seeing the play and the different characters and how they relate to each other and how like, how you can interpret the um, play in a different way that usually is said to, is interpreted, I don't know. I'm really um, getting into it actually. It's, it's definitely not a light read, it's quite a dense read actually. Um, but like I said, it's it's great to sort of dip into these sort of books so you can, you know, widen your horizons a bit. Um, I, actually, what's really interesting for me is the sort of, the plays that aren't as well known as we would, as the normal kind of, you know, ex like Romeo and Juliet, Midsummer's Night's Dream. Um, the plays that interest me in reading them is the Richard plays, the Richard II. You've got Hamlet, for me, I want to know more about that. Julius Caesar, The Merchant of Venice, I don't know that. God, I really, I haven't, I don't really know much about Shakespeare and I, I didn't learn a lot about him in school actually. King Lear. Like I said, I, I wanted to become writer since I was really young, but for some reason, like, I didn't get into reading till I was basically had money of my own to buy books with and in school I wasn't I wasn't really I think I had a bad time in school and I just I couldn't be bothered with the reading you know I did I worked hard and I studied but I didn't I wasn't into it you know I wasn't really invested in it so there we go you should try it you should pick the book up um Fellowship of the Ring that's another one I thought I need to read I and honestly I just nearly finished it this one, I've got the next one, it's on, it's next to the bed, just because this is usually the time I read it, it's at night time, and I have a sort of system of like, oh, which book do I read during which part of the day, so the morning I'll read a sort of like, uh, I tend to read something more like academic, or like, you know, something like that, you know, like that, and then, you know, as it carries on the day, I'll read something more like Jane Eyre, and then after that, you know, something similar maybe. And I go through like different books during different parts of the day because I don't, I don't want to read the same book until it's finished. You know, I like to sort of read four books on the go and vary it a little bit. 
everyone knows the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, you haven't really, you don't know what Lord of the Rings is until you've read the books, I think. My brother's read the books a million times over. <laughs> He's an absolute fan of the books. I bought him the, the box set of this edition, these really lovely, like, hardback editions, and, you know, I think he's very happy with them. Um, the writing is just so, like, immersive. You just read it and you, you become immediately, like, immersed in this, in the Middle Earth world. It's just um, a dream to read when you're feeling really stressed or just shit, or you just want to get away from, uh, I don't know, being inside. You just want to feel like you're on a, an adventure. Um, you know, and the good thing about reading a book like this rather than just watching the films is that you're really like, I think it's, there's something about reading the book that's completely more, you're more involved with it and you're more like in it actually, you're more in the scene than you would be just watching the films, which I love the films. I've seen the films a million times and I watch it over and over again like every year, you know. Um, another book. Um, Swimming Home by Deborah Levy. Um, her other book, Hot Milk, is absolutely my favourite book. One of my favourite books ever. Um, let me just read back. As he arrives with his family at the villa in the hills above Nice, Joe sees a body in the sw swimming pool. But the girl is very much alive. She is Kizzy Finch, a self-proclaimed botanist, botanist with green painted fingernails, walking naked out of the water and into the heart of their holiday. Why is she let there? What does she want from them? Or, and why does Joe's enigmatic wife allow her to remain? It's... Um... Ooh. The... Levy's style of writing is, is just magic. It's just... It takes simple things and puts them matter-of-fact in a sentence and makes a simple sentence sparkle. And the reason why I like her work is it's absolutely different from any book you would just pick up in in the bookshop. Her work stands out as something singular and unique, and um, and I honestly can't believe she's not more like popular, or famous. I don't know. I've read this book so many times; the book is actually falling apart. I just think if I want inspiration to write, I, even if I just read a paragraph, even if I just read a chapter of her work, I just immediately it just seems to unlock my creativity and I just writing like you know that's for me why I need a I need to read really good books to inspire me to write my best kind of work because it's not enough to just write standard kind of writing I feel like when you write you have to write something new unique and and just like I said like it has to sparkle off the page it can't just be like like any other book and I don't think it's something you can really learn I think it's something that comes from inside you something that you know it's interactions of your something inside you that form these sentences that come up and then you and then you know they sound like they live in a way they don't just read they sort of live and thrive on the page you know so swimming home this actually was, wait, shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize 2012. That's why it's also good. Um, Wolf Hall actually was, um, oh, it won the Booker Prize. I'm pretty sure it won the Booker Prize. I'm sure the second novel in the series, the Bring Up the Bodies, won the Booker Prize as well. And it's a shame that the third one didn't. I think it was a runner-up, it was shortlisted, but it didn't win. Next book, I'm gonna really run through these because I'm absolutely chatting. Um, normal People, yes. Who doesn't like Normal People? They recently, um, there was a series based on it. I've actually got the, the scripts, the book of scripts. This is honestly like one of the best series I've ever seen. It's just so relatable so like humane so like um comforting in a way because everything that goes on in it i'm like this is me and i swear if, I, if only i'd have been able to read a book like this and watch a series like this when i was 16 i'd feel so much more better about myself because you know 
even now, like, even if I just read this book, which I do, I read this book because it comforts me because it's got, it normalizes normal people, it normalizes experiences you think oh, only you suffer from. It, mental health, a serious issue, you know, in this day and age, needs to be normalized, it needs to be talked about more, needs to People need to be comfortable with their differences and to be comfortable with anxiety and the and depression and to know that people suffer as well. Like I suffer a lot, a serious a lot of anxiety and you know sometimes I feel super down about it. Like the last few days and you you just feel like you're the only person in the world that suffers from it and you feel like so much more. It just. It just feels like you're heard when you read books like this and you think, oh, there's someone understands it. And this isn't just me and and it's not something that will be you know, will make you unlovable or it'll it's not something that'll make you people hate you and turn away from you. Um and in a way it makes your it makes you unique because it's you and this is just you and that's it. And humans are humans and we all suffer from different things and you, you can't be perfect because perfection doesn't exist and I always thought like this needs to be perfect, that needs to be perfect and it was such a struggle just to make myself be perfect when it's, in reality it's not, life is not perfect. Um, for those of you that have not read this book, uh, out of all the books that I've picked today, you should pick this one to read first and foremost because it is a book that changed me. It, it really is one of the kind of Sally Rooney is an amazing writer and like, she's the, a pioneer in, in writing for young people today. She is, I think she's set the standard, the bar is so high in her writing. And this is the kind of writing that I enjoy to, to read because it's clear, it's not trying to go by old standards of what a writing, uh, what a book should be. It's just fresh, new, current, modern, the sentence is simple and it, like it's oh it's just like Levy's writing simple sparkling and and takes ordinary things and elevates them which is much more interesting I think than just trying to make a waffle out of the you know trying to really waffle it up I think like this is okay a lot of writing courses are great but I think like the way we need to go with writing should be rethought and like and explored personally and not restricted to old sort of conventions of like you need to do this and rules and forget the rules like the rules don't exist really like rules should be like they say rules are made to be broken and we need to experiment with writing rather than trying to please old types of like standards you know which I think are, honestly are just boring like um yeah I'll read the the description for you <clears throat> people know that Marianne lives in the white mansion with the driveway and that Connell's mother is a cleaner but no one knows of the special relationship between these facts Connell and Marianne grow up in the same small town in west of Ireland but it's a similar ooh, but the similarities end there in school, Connell is popular and well-liked, while Marianne is a loner who has learnt from painful experience to stay away from her classmates. When the two strike up a conversation in Marianne's kitchen, awkward but electrifying, something life-changing begins. Normal People is a story of mutual fascination, friendship and love. It takes us from that conversation to the years beyond in the company of two people, funny, magnetic, complex, who try to stay apart but find they can't. It shows us how difficult it is to change who we are. And with heartbreaking tenderness, it reveals how we learn about sex and power, the desire to be hurt and be hurt, the desire to hurt and be hurt, the desire to love and be loved. Here is, 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 an, here is an exquisite love story which breeds fiction with new life. I honestly can't do not have anything like no problems with this book in any way like it. you see as well i've read it so many times it's it's just it's a book that you come to again and again and it each time you read it 
as you have a different experience with it. It reveals different things to the previous time you read it. Um, and honestly, it's, it's a book to just feel like, you know, to help with the modern times. There's a real angst, I think, with with everything going on, especially like, God, all this bad news, and, and just avoid it, don't even bother going on the news, you know, and all this, the last few years it's all been about like, the next Brexit, and then, you know, the Covid, and I can't, I just think, you know, we need to stop and be like, okay, what do we actually want now? You know, especially us young people, I think we need to really think about what we want, like priorities, what we want to focus our time with, um, what we want to push ourselves to do and like and see and feel and think, you know, where do we want to be, you know, yeah, great. Um, last book, um, it's Venus and Aphrodite, History of a Goddess by Bethany Hughes. Another beautiful, stunning, absolutely amazing hardback cover. Oh my gosh. This book is just amazing. Uh, I love history. I love to read about history. Um, and we've all heard about Venus and Aphrodite, but do we actually know the real history of where this goddess, these goddesses have come from? You know, how they've developed through time, what they have meant to people and what they mean to people now. What, what we still associate with Venus and Aphrodite and uh, these beliefs that still come, uh, that still are integrated with our cultures and our society and it's just a great read to to get into detail about these these figures that we really have no idea about we just know them from like you know from the the what's it we know oh of course we know um, Botticelli's The Birth of Venus, we know that is famous, but we we don't know the history. And I think, like like I was saying, we as young people, we, we start to, we should actually start to be curious about our history and, you know, this would make us, I think, it would just make life more interesting if you just know a bit more about, like, these things. And, And honestly, like, it's not a big read. The writing is like, what, double spaced or something sort of big. Great pictures as well. Don't you just love a book with some pictures? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's, I have a few more books, but I think I've talked a lot. Um, yeah, today the weather is really amazing. Can't really go out because of quarantine. Um, this is my first spring here in Lisbon, uh, and so far it's, it's just amazing. The weather is just stunning. It's, it's, it feels like s summer almost outside. And I think it really helps during this time to have some sun. Um, you can open these doors and it's just you can let all the fresh air in and make it all nice inside here. Um, yeah, as soon as I can really get out and drive around again, I'm gonna make more, you know, nature, I'm gonna make more nature videos. And the whole reason why I started those videos was because uh, I thought it was really meditative to, to just focus the camera on things and just sort of build a sequence with that. And it felt relaxing and I realised how much it actually helped to, to not only to to look deeply at the nature and sort of observe and look and think, oh, I'll record that or I'll do that. But the, the editing process is so relaxing when you're sitting inside a house and you're, you're looking at a screen with nature and you're sort of re-experiencing it in a way, as opposed to if you're just looking at charts or something technical. It's so, it was a great, <laughs> I think it was a great idea. Um, I hope it helps you guys um, in whatever way it does. I know it, it's always helped me to look at like YouTubers, like I mentioned in previous video, Athena Mella, she's great. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video. I've got lots more books I'm just going to talk about. 
I've got lots of other things to talk about, you know, things that I can recommend. I'll keep you updated with the book that I'm writing right now. Um, yeah, I hope you have a great week or day, rest of your day, <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye. To say if you